Okay. <laughs> the opening to our amazing podcast that we don't have an opening for. We need like a theme song. Yeah. Friends. We're working on it. Yeah. Friends theme song. Wait, um, Uriah came up with the theme song. Oh. Something about Emmy going boom. And Cammy. They like the, the boom. boom. Something like Something that. Something around that. Anyway. That's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be just a short one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you for joining us, Shanique. We're so happy that you are here um, because we want to talk about something that we think you can really help people with about loving your body. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because you can love your body whether you think it is in the best shape of its life or if you think it needs improvement, you can still love on it. I feel like yeah. it has a lot to do with confidence, too, and uh, learning to just like self-love overall. I, I had to deal with um, learning to love myself, too. It didn't happen with bodybuilding, more so just, like, fixing what I'm going through internally. Um, I had a kidney issue before I started working out, and um, I was really skinny. I couldn't really gain any weight. I ate Chinese food, McDonald's, everything. Um, and I was just, like, 108 pounds. Um So when I got in the gym, it was just like I was focusing more on myself. So that's, you know, when you're focusing on something that's for you to make you better, what whatever size you are, whatever you look like, it it generally just automatically makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. So that's automatically the process of starting to actually love yourself and love where you're going physically. When you were that thin, were you um, still going to the gym too? I so I ran track for about eight years. So. Um, just being skinny was something that was just natural to me for years. Um, but once I had that, um, medical condition, I got to the gym and, um, I was so small. I didn't know what to do. I was eating like chicken salad. Actually, just had a chicken salad. <laughs> you can't go wrong with chicken salad. You can't. Um, but I had chicken salads. I had like those naked protein shakes or whatever, um, and uh, it was just like a process. I went there about six, seven times a day. I didn't know. I didn't know no days off was actually not something not to do. Like, but um, yeah, I was eating clean, and um, it took some time to actually gain weight. It was more so like I looked leaner, but like the weight just didn't hit me yet. But then I hired a coach, which you should always get. <laughs> and then the process came. I started adding weight, and I was feeling much better. The doctor was like, "You're." you change like overnight type of thing. So um, after that, I was just like, I'm going to just keep this up. I'm feeling great. People are so nice here. You know, it's just, you're getting into a new, um, a new circle of people who have a different kind of mindset than your average people that you know, like outside. Yeah. What would you say to somebody that's severely struggling with self-love and their body image and they're trying to figure out how to build that confidence? Where do they start? Sometimes um, it's the people that they're surrounded by, Um, people who don't have the same mindset as you. Like where I'm at now, I've lost every single friend that I've had just because I was focused on getting myself better and whether building muscle, getting into the industry and all that stuff. Um, You know, my boyfriend is a number one motivator in my life. You know, he's very focused in what I'm doing, um, just wants to see the best for me. And it's your circle that really will push you. Um, it's your circle that's going to tell you like, well, you need to wake up and fix this. It's somebody who's going to actually put you in a place where you need to like wake up and just make that change for yourself. And anybody who's actually like struggling with that, you have to be real with yourself. That's the number one thing. You have to be real with yourself and know where to start. I think that's hard for people. A lot of people have trouble with being their authentic Mm -hmm. self and saying to themselves, because you got to admit it to yourself first, like something is wrong. Yes. And it's on you. And there's so many people out there who are just like, like, I'm fine with this. But Mm -hmm. you could see like, you're not fine. Like you could, could, some people, they could just read other people. It's like, there's, you know. Yeah. And your real friends will tell you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your real friends will tell you. Real friends, no matter how raw, how real, how blunt it is. And how much you may like not like them after that, but it's just like, but they were right, you know? Yeah. We were talking a lot about this with Chadi last week and kind of how self-love and your relationship with yourself bleeds into your relationship yes. with those around you. Mm-hmm. So if you're finding that people who are surrounding you are doing the opposite of what you actually need, one, take a look at your relationship with yourself yes. and then learn to reconstruct your life in the way that you need to set boundaries if you have to. 
prioritize yourself. Yeah. Those are all like super crucial when it comes to, you know, being able to take care of yourself and at least have a good relationship with yourself. Even consuming like um, unhealthy food, mm-hmm. drinking excessively or, in, and, you know, consuming something not illegal here. But, <laughs> <laughs> but stuff like that, if you're overdoing stuff like that, it's going to have an effect on your mentality. Yeah. You know, you might become depressed. Um, you might be getting to your head. That conscious is always talking to you. So that can automatically be a dimmer on your own life too. What about social media? Oh. So. (laughs) Wait, okay. I I have to tell you. Now listen, I follow you and I really appreciate when you speak up for yourself and for your relationship because people think they know who you are just from social media and that is such a small glimpse of your life. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm curious to think. So, social media, I feel like back in the day, like, without social media, without, like, phones, it was just like, I'll see you when I see you. Have a good day. <laughs> I'll think whatever I think about, you know. Like, but <laughs> social media is like an outlet where you can say whatever you want and you won't get anything, any rebuttal, really, physically. Done to you. <laughs> but um, you can't feed into it because those are the people, they want you to say something. They want to you to respond so they can just respond to make you even more mad and it's just like a tumble of a mess so sometimes social media breaks are so important um just taking a minute just to get off of social media and just enjoy life go on a hike you know go for a run it's beautiful out summer we're on the west coast i love hiking with my boyfriend we go for runs we go for walks with our dogs just doing something that's going to give you clarity um helps and you can still be on social media but take time balance it out you know yeah i think there's definitely pros and cons mm-hmm. to it yes absolutely and it's kind of like you know look at the relationships in your life but then also look at who you're following on social media what who you're engaging with how you're engaging with those platforms yeah and, and if you're following the wrong kind you? of platform that's just like oh yeah because there's there's just some people who just um they they spread a lot of making fun of people or there's like pages where they like make fun of like you know people who aren't fitness or people who are trying to you know get their bodies healthier Mm -hmm. just people who automatically have like bad energy on their pages and a lot of people like to follow that because it's funny um but in general it's just really you might be the next person you never know and i've been in that position before and it's like well this is what they do for their page you can't really get mad because that's what they do and they they have you know me they have another person another person more people um and sometimes you just gotta be like that's just life you know i was bullied in high school and it's just like well that's just what she wanted to do you know i'm i feel great i'm doing better and you know it's all about overcoming all of that i think that's where the confidence comes in too because if you're confident in yourself it doesn't matter what people say to you because yeah. that's that doesn't reflect on you because it's yeah. that's their problem, mm-hmm. not your own. And it's always um, when someone is is saying something bad on you, they're dealing with something internally that's going to um, basically spur out, try to make you feel bad, just so they could feel better, you know. Um, and that's I feel like that's in most cases. That goes with yourself too yes do not say bad things about yourself you want to improve your self-love yes start by actually trying to say nice things to yourself yeah think of positive things about yourself wake up every morning and compliment yourself in the mirror that you're gonna have a great day and pursue with it yeah even if you feel like you can't find anything like find something right we all have something that we like about ourselves right and if you can look in the mirror and focus on the things that you love and continue to try and nurture the areas that you maybe don't get stronger and figure it out. Yeah. You get better and better at it, but it does start with how you talk to yourself. Totally. Even that voice in your head, even that voice in your head. Or like knowing who you can go to Mm -hmm. for that, which I'm glad that we're talking about this because Saturday um, I put on some non-stretch pants (laughs) and I was like, Oh, there is a big difference between pants with stretch in them and pants that don't. And I was getting a little, little tummy roll oh, I and I was like too. oh no and then I thought well I'm gonna talk to Emmy and we need to go to the grocery store because we need to dial this nutrition in a little bit more because we get into summertime and what I would have said was <laughs> literally everybody has a stomach roll <laughs> it's called I was eating human. Like, when I sit down roll. <laughs> yeah it was like it, it kind of hurt and I'm like well these will maybe it'll give a little bit you know I still wore them 
I was not ashamed. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you looked great. You have to own it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I just made sure the, the shirt was a little bit baggier, but I was like, we're just going to rock this because I already picked those pants and they were already on. A little oversized. Yeah, exactly. Top, really. But you I do, know it. I do think like what you wear is a part of it too, right? Because you want to wear things that you feel good in. Yeah. And that means, you know, having your own style or wearing clothes that fit your body, but that's part of it too. And you don't have to necessarily dress or look like somebody else. You can figure out how to be yourself too. A lot of people like to follow trends. Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, dangly earring and like spiked hair, everyone's look the same. It's just like, have your own style. Yeah. You know, don't Isn't buy. that so weird? People are, have sort, and I think this is another thing with social media. People have sort of morphed into like one look. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Like that Kardashian look. I know. Is the thing. And now when I watch TV shows and not every, and people don't look the same. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, this is nice. Yeah. Like it's, have an individual. Have your own style. Yeah, individual There's self. There's so yeah. much other things than, um, you know, Louis Vuitton and uh, Gucci <laughs> and Coach. And I don't know what else. I get myself in Forever 21, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think we have a Forever 21 open anymore, do we? I don't know. It's like I haven't been to the mall. You can't really even try yeah. anything in dress rooms anymore. I'm oh, like, really? I'll figure it out later, I guess. I'll come <laughs> well, back. To does, you. does anybody just try it out outside like, go to bathroom. stores anymore? I thought we were just online shopping now. I do. Yeah. Amazon Prime. Yeah. 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 You can try on stuff seven days. Oh, and then you yeah. return it? Yeah. 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 You oh. keep it, buy it. Online it's pretty shopping. pretty awesome. I haven't really had any reason to shop because no one has seen This me. is, I, I, I bought this two days ago. I know. I'm so excited and it's orange. I love it. Um, yeah, so I do, I think um, when you talk about self-love, when we've talked about this before, I kind of confuse self-care with self-love. Like, I'll be like, oh, I did a fa I did a facial, like, I did a mask. And people a mask. are like, I no. I feel so good about my stuff right now. <laughs> it's, like, different. It's so, it's totally <laughs> but different. But it does, it does feel good when you do, like, those detox masks and you just, totally. like, cute, I don't get the cucumbers, but the little, um. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the yeah. under eye patches. You always feel good. I'm just like, babe, look at my mask. I'm just like. <laughs> It, it feels great, you know. Self care, self love. It has it, it. You can you can put two and two together. Yeah. When when do you feel like was the moment when you were like I I have this utmost confidence in myself when I stepped on stage? Really? Yeah. Is that nerve wracking? That was a uh, that was a way to get um, out of my comfort zone because I never did anything like when I was in high school. Doing presentations was like walking up to do a presentation with the president of the United States. Oh, so you'd be nervous. It was nervous. that nerve-wracking to me. Really? Yeah, like my heart would like I would never have thought like, that. I can't. You know, I'd be so nervous. But um, when I started working out and somebody mentioned competing, I'm just like, I got to do it. I got to figure it out. I got to do something that's going to like make me not so shy, not so nervous, not so like jumpy. And I was the first show. <laughs> I was the first I mean, show. It's all, it has to be like a blackout. I was so scared. I don't Yeah. Even, I don't remember. I remember because you blacked out. I like basically ran off stage. I didn't know like how to walk off stage like in the line. I didn't, literally like walked out of the line and walked away. I was like, I guess I won that show. Well, there I you was go. Confused, but hey, I, <laughs> like, I left with trophies, so I guess I did good. But um, that that definitely helped with my confidence. Um, doing seminars, I've done seminars, I've done guest posings, all that, and just um, meeting people at expos, fans at booths. Um, it really opened up this gateway to be more vocal and speak more, and just be and just grow more, you know. And mm -hmm. the industry helped me so much with growing and just kind of um, connecting with more people. That's and good. Trifecta. Yeah. So. Do you, Do you feel that that community is pretty supportive? Of each other because you guys are all competing. Industry. Yes, absolutely. In a sense, um, you find people who actually just get you. Uh -huh. And there's all kinds of um, people of all kinds of types everywhere um, from different countries. I've, you know, befriended a lot of people. Um, and it's just when you have sp other people who kind of come from the same type of background you have, whether it's struggles and um, go getting... Um, Never giving up, and I'm part of a, um, a clothing co a clothing company called Dark Sport, Dark Sport, and um, the whole motto is never give up. And the people on the team, I was just there in Los Angeles with them. They've been through trial and error, and it's just it feels good to be around people. And they're all bodybuilders, all champions. They've won Olympia, Brandon Henderson, for example, um, and they've all like had that struggle, and it's something that you can relate to. And you know they went through all that and got on stage and still did it. Uh -huh. And no came out on what. top. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it, it just feels good that there's other people like that, too. That has to help with self-love 
too, to be able to talk to those people because they've been there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't even imagine what like the 12 weeks leading up to Olympia Uh. are like. And I talked to, (laughs) I talked to Brian about this too, because I'm like, your girlfriend must be in the industry, isn't she? And he's like, hell yeah, she is. He's all, you think I'm going to be eating like this and have someone else at my house who's not eating like this? Like, he's all, we would have to break up for that time. My boyfriend boyfriend ate donuts and pizza when I was prepping for Olympia. Oh, hell no. It hurt my soul, but it was Jeff is in trouble now. It was okay. That is so (laughs) rough. That is so rough. It's really hard. It is really hard. Um, But sometimes when you want just to get to that goal, you, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's food. I mean, yeah. if you walk by a pizza store, you're not going to yell at the store. For, you know? <laughs> right. It's like, why are you open? Why are you making that delicious food? I hate you. you know? Well, when I was putting those pants on on Saturday, I just looked in the mirror and said, you would be miserable if you had abs right now. And then I just left. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's it like, is very true. I was literally going to go drink wine and eat dinner with some friends. Yes. And if I had abs, I wouldn't be able to eat that dinner. No, it was like, noki. I'll have my water instead. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's fun. Yeah. No, shots. No, I'll have water. Thanks. <laughs> Shots of water. It's, it's a good time. Um, <laughs> I could totally see you having to do that, too. That is so crazy. I've had to. I've gone out to dinners where I just had to eat, like, a chicken salad mm-hmm. and yeah. water. Do so. you do you semi-hate chicken now? Or? I love chicken. Okay. Because I did the same thing. When I first got into nutrition, I fell into the trap of too much, and I was eating, like, grilled chicken, steamed broccoli, like, the most oh healthy, God, yeah. like, plain <laughs> diet ever. And I literally hate chicken breast more than anything. I feel like it was after like dieting for so long. Yeah. It's just like, mm. I can't do it. I hate it. I won't even eat a fried chicken breast. Really? Like only chicken thighs. Chicken pot, I mean, chicken pot pies. Um, Popeyes has a chicken sandwich. You sure? It's really good. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good. They got spicy mayonnaise, pickles. I, I like, so I'll only do the chicken thighs now. But I got so burnt out on it because I like pushed it to such an extreme. Oh, man. Yeah. Chicken every single meal. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was my breaking point. I was like, right. I can't do this anymore. Like, oh, no, I, I love something different. I became a dietitian because I wanted to know how could I eat as much food as possible and still be healthy get the right and calories shape. And yeah. Because I love food so right. much. And it, it like ruined my relationship with food because I went like down this bad path. Right. Um, which thank God I got out of. But to this day, I still refuse to eat chicken breast. It's like. <laughs> Not your own self-love, girl. It is. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, drop the chicken. Get with it. Exactly, exactly. When you uh, when you post um, and people can see your body on social media, I don't know how to say this in a tasteful way, but <laughs> you, you know, can we, do you? Yes, when people when people can see, you know, all your hard work. That's a that's a there nice way of saying it. Um, they can see all your hard work. Is that ever uncomfortable for you to yes. share that? I mean, there are some people who make it uncomfortable. Yeah, because um, we would never question a man, right? You know, in in their little speedo. Literally, you, they're wearing their underwear. They'll drop, yeah. and then underwear flex. I'm just like, okay, right? Well, I can't do that. <laughs> it, no, it is. I mean, it is different. Yeah, it is. Um, the bodybuilding industry is different because a lot of women. Um, it's been normalized within the industry. Women taking update photos and you know their underwear and their bra. Um, men taking updates in their underwear and just being half naked or naked with a star. Um, <laughs> so um, that's been normalized, but I I have never been that comfortable just to get to that point. Um, there'll be bikinis, something like that. But when it comes to like the comments, I'm just like, it's weird. But I know I have to post something right of me, you know, whether it's in a bikini or in the gym with shorts or something like that. But regardless, it's still my body in some way or form, and it's gonna be. Um, Weird comments sometimes. <laughs> and that's so, okay. I'll just yeah. delete them. <laughs> you, you just mentally prepare when you're putting it it's out like, there. Delete. Yeah. That's okay. I'm, I'm just always curious about that. <laughs> we, we uh, over summer, we went to a pool party and one of our coworkers posted the photo. Mm-hmm. And I was like, please don't tag me. And she thought I didn't want her to tag me because I didn't like how my body looked. Mm-hmm. And she's like, can't be every, everybody's a bikini body. And I was like, no, it's not that. It's yeah. that. I know the harassment that goes around anytime stuff like that's out People there. People are bold on Exa- that. Yeah. Exactly. And they and you know they can they can hide behind the computer or behind the screen and that makes me nervous. Right. And I just don't like that feeling, I guess. Right. You know, when you're when you feel like you're putting something out there. Yeah, I mean there's always a risk factor when you put anything out there. Um 
But There's just so much judgment. I feel I feel like people enjoy being judgmental. Through a screen. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But like they're never going to say that to your it's face. No, human, I'm it's like, pretty human nature, it though. Is. That's how we just, like, function naturally. Like, they're on the other side of the world. And yeah. You can't do anything to them, so they will say whatever. And- right. I might think something, but I would never comment on someone's photo like that. No. I just don't understand. Like, I mean, th- th- there's people that just want to have a say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, even on, let's say, um, like, these fitness pages, like, um, a big one, like Flex Magazine or something like that. There's people who will comment negatively, and I'm like, why are you following that page, mm-hmm. you know? Like, why are you following this person if you want to speak negatively right. about them, you know? But I, I, I never got around that point. I never I never understood that point at all. You yeah. Know? But I'm glad it makes me feel good to hear you say oh, yeah. that you don't even – that doesn't even bother you because it. a lot of people, it really – You can't let it bother It eats you. at yeah. them, you know? You got to get off social media if, you, if it bothers you, you know, you can't because – People will say whatever they want, right? In any way or form, and it'll be the most disrespectful thing. And if you let, if you let it get to you, it will get to you. So it's yeah. I've had, I've had a lot of friends during this time who have um, deleted all their social media, and they said that they would they noticed it wasn't making them feel good, and they mm-hmm. don't. And it took like two or three weeks, as it is like an addiction, you know. We are constantly. It's I check it in the morning, you know. It's like a routine. It becomes part of your routine, right? And it's just such a time waster. Looking through those real, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, that the algorithm's getting you because I could stay on that forever, and then I'll, all of a sudden I'm like, I don't even know who these people are. I'm just watching the reels <laughs> you the gotta, whole time. You got to figure out how to use it for your advantage, and then set boundaries around that. <laughs> totally. You don't like certain things that you don't want to see on your explorer. Yeah. There's a lot of dogs on my explorer. A lot of dogs. Oh my gosh! One of our coworkers <laughs> showed me his page, uh, his explore page, and it was all cats. I was like, dang, we know what you're looking at. I mean, it's just like all these little cats. I'm like, they're, they're so cute, but your whole the whole page, not a single other thing. Just really? cats. Oh, yes. I like cats. Yep. He well, he cat? has two of them. He has two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. So have you ever felt like you've hated your body or does that ever still happen to you? And what do you do about it? I think it was... Um, it was my first off season um, being a pro. I gained like twenty pounds in a week. In and a I week, was water weight. Yeah. Oh, geez. my skin was so tight I couldn't even pinch it. Um, I just felt full all the time, and that's more so just saying, "Well, screw it. I'm done with my diet. I'm eating everything." And um, I knew I had to do a reverse diet, but I didn't do it. And I was just like, I'm going to get this off. It was taking forever to get off. I was like, I lost two pounds. It was, it was just water weight, but it was so hard for me to just mentally get back into the grind of just like, you know, staying in shape. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to eat everything. And I just kept going and going and going. And I just, it became more of like a binge. Um and I was just so bloated and just so soft, and I wasn't I wasn't used to that. Um, so after that, it was more so just you gotta stop eating everything. You have to get in the gym. You have to do your cardio in the morning. Fast cardio is like the number one thing that works the best for me. I'm just like just gotta do it. You have to push push yourself. You just have to be honest with yourself. Did you it know? take you a while to figure out what works for your body? Carb cycling was pretty much the first thing I went to. Um, I am naturally petite, so eating more carbs, more food uh, will keep weight on me. So, I mean, I eat four meals, five meals a day now, but it's a little bit more larger meals, I would say. Um, But Um, I need to ask a dumb question. So you guys are the experts and I'm like, "Mm, I don't know much about nutrition. What is carb cycling? (laughs) What is that? Carb cycling for me, I would go uh, low carb for my off days. I would have high carb days for like um, a Monday leg day. And then it would be like moderate carbs for the week. But that's mainly carb cycling. You're just going up high carbs, Mm -hmm. moderate carbs, no carbs. I see. Okay. You're basically taking your carbs and then placing them around the times that you would use them most. Kind of like optimize them. I see. Back days, leg days are more bigger body parts. So you Mm -hmm. need more fuel. Um, But that won't be like every single leg that you have. I see. I call myself a carbaholic. Um, (laughs) I have carbs in all my meals. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I like carbs. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Actually, um, my peak week last year, I had 
carbs in every single meal. Really? That was the only thing keeping me up. <laughs> that was the only thing keeping me up. <laughs> Gosh, I never thought of that because you are like pushing your body to the extreme and you need those carbs to fuel your body. Absolutely. Um, which I've never looked at food like that. Like this is what you need to feel your body until I started working out. Right. And then it's like, okay, I could feel the difference when I you're don't eat enough. burning more stuff. And For like, sure. You know, most people, they don't, they sit in a desk, like literally don't do anything, whether it's, you can go, like, I've had clients where they say, I'm working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and I can't make it to the gym. I'm like, go in the morning. It's mm-hmm. nice. Like, right. Fast cardio is like a really good way to start my day. Even working out, doing a faster workout, pretty effective. Faster cardio is when like you haven't eaten anything Nothing. before yeah. you go. Okay, you can that's faster workouts. That's how. Too. That's what I do every morning. I go every morning. It's six thirty. It really is fun. It's just it starts your day. Totally it feels good. It gets you wait, uh, wakes you up a lot. Too. I notice the days yeah. the days that I don't go because sometimes I can't get in the class because mm-hmm. you know how everything is right now. But the days that I don't go, I have less self love for myself because I'm already mad at myself that I didn't start right, my day out right. the right and it way. Just gets at you, it's like Dang, totally in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and then and then I have my gym boys, and then they'll call me and be like, "Cambi, you know you could like, do where are you? No, well, they're like, you know you could do a four thirty in the afternoon class, a five thirty class. I'm like, guys, I need it in, to do I it in the morning. I thought you were saying gym boys tacos. Oh for a no, second. no, I was like, then, no. I get, then I gym recover boys, with my gym like, boys. Is that, like, is that oh, a God. location that I don't? Yeah, know it's it's like a Mexican. I'm obsessed with it as well. Basically, like fast food. Yeah. It's like fast. Yeah. Like we have one right over here. That's actually what I had for lunch today. But it is your favorite. So. <laughs> it is my favorite. Yeah. Um, I do think the like the physical side of it is part of it, though. Like for me and what I try and tell people all the time is don't work out to try and lose weight or improve your body. Do it because you want to take care of yourself or right. feel better. Right. Because knowing like that you're physically capable of great things and like right. using your body and pushing in and learning to enjoy the workout side of it, I think is part of it. Absolutely. You got to have fun with it because if you're, I mean, typically you'll be on a training plan. It'll be same, the same for a bit and you can't get tired of it. You just have to learn to love training. I love working out. I love doing legs, you know, um, but if you're looking for like a physical change and that takes a long time. It does. And if you don't see it like you want to see it, you're going to get mad at yourself and you're just going to quit. Mm-hmm. And that's usually what happens. Do you get membership in the, in January? Don't go in February. Stop going to March, April, yeah. May. And, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I used to tell myself um, when I would not be motivated to go to the gym, you know, I mean, there's people that like don't have legs or can't walk or can't run. And you're over here just complaining that you have to do it. With your legs and stuff? Like, like come on. <laughs> yeah, with, with your legs. Like, how selfish. Get your ass to the gym. <laughs> There's actually this woman. Um, she's older. She has a cane, like a roller. And she, I, we see her every single day in the, in, the, um, in the gym walking around the track every single day. And I'm just really? like, if she's in here, nobody has an excuse. Totally. You know? Yeah, I love that. Well, it, it's also like... You you should kind of push your body to see what you're physically capable of. Right. Because it's very rewarding. And if you use your body, it's another way to, like, love it and appreciate it because, you know, you, you only have one body. Like, you can yeah. even learn, a, like, a new type of sport, hobby. Yeah. Like, I love tennis. Tennis, it winded. I got asthma, but it's okay. <laughs> it's still fun. Boxing is fun. I have really bad eyes, but uh, my right eye is really bad. Um but I still love boxing. It gets me really winded still, but it's okay. He works <laughs> with me. It's fine. <laughs> I love it. I love that you're finding like different ways to to do it. I was at um, spin class. Well, I was just thinking. I love watching I when don't you. Know if I could do that. You don't I like, just don't know if I could do that. I I love then, it. Sometimes it's like an emotional feeling. I don't know why. Like yeah. when you get done, you're just like so proud of your body and you right. accomplish. Like you feel like you've accomplished something. But I was on the side and I could look out and there was three women and they were all lifting super heavy. And when I left, when I was you know leaving class, I was like, hey, I want to tell you guys like. That's super motivated me just watching you keep put adding on the weight because at first they were just doing the bar and I was like yeah. oh dang that's what I do and I felt like kind of cool and then yeah. when they started adding the weight I was like whoa like this is amazing <laughs> but it's fun when you do right. that too when you do the videos yeah. and you're like squatting and I'm just like dang as I'm watching from my couch like probably eating nachos I'm like dang this is amazing I like did nachos to last see- night 
You did? You had nachos? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. I love, I love <laughs> me some nachos. See, you can have everything in moderation. Yeah. Right? Just don't, like, overdo you it. You just have to have, like, a good foundation to start with. Otherwise, yeah. it's not moderation. That's true. It's just yeah. you saying everything in moderation. Like, right. Like, eat nachos every day. <laughs> but it's it fine. is Balance. It is neat to me to see women, like, push their body like that because that is not something that I never really considered. But it feels really good when... Before I was using the 10 pound weight and I could, and I know saying this to you guys are like 10 pounds, but for me, that was, it was difficult. And then to go from 10 pounds, like to 12 and then 15, and then I'm looking at the men in the class and we're using the same weights, right? you know, or the same medicine mm-hmm. ball. I'm like, okay, like you're, I can see my improvement. Um, that's what I take away from the gym. That's what makes me feel, that's what makes me have self-love. It's not how I look though. Okay. That makes me really want to talk about the concept of women not wanting to lift weights because they don't want to look like a man. Cool. I feel like that's lack of knowledge more so. And just people who don't explain it. And also when I'm in the gym, I see, um, a, a girl and a boy, girlfriend and boyfriend. And, um, the man is always showing the girl how to work out mm-hmm. and it's just like completely completely off <laughs> like the form is completely off oh boy or like go with lighter weight don't don't use too heavy or something like that and um it's, been, it's just been normalized for people i guess outside of the fitness industry because it's a small industry um think that as soon as you lift something heavy you're gonna be like mm-hmm. you know massive and it's why do like, people think that i have no idea i just don't understand the science but that. i have no knowledge of stuff like that and i would never think that though I, I don't know how that came about but it's a serious problem with a lot of women and they don't want to lift heavy because they don't want to get too big carbs and are bad apparently I'm, my response women. every time is yeah. do you know how much work it takes to get that and big food. like you should be so lucky <laughs> right yeah like if you get that big i mean you should be pretty freaking proud of yourself well when i just had but, a gym membership i would just go and i would do like the stairs or run on the treadmill, and then I'll just be like, peace, because I didn't know what yeah. to do. And it's a very- looking un- at the weights like- mm. Yeah, and it's a really uncomfortable <laughs> feeling when you right. don't know. Or also, one time I was there with my girlfriend, and this guy comes up, and he's like trying to school us on how to do it. And, oh, man. And cool. she was like, don't listen to anything you just said. And I'm like, what in the heck? Like, that's so kind of rude. Right. It, and well, she was saying that he wasn't giving us good advice. And she, you know, had been lifting for a while. So she felt like she knew more than what he was trying to tell us. There's always those those gym gurus who uh, don't really know exactly, but want to feel like they do. Yeah. Um, I've had someone before, like went way, way before I became pro, um, tell me like, oh, I've been... I've been working out. He was wearing a belt too. Don't forget it. He wasn't. He wasn't training <laughs> legs or back, but he was wearing a belt, so he was serious. <laughs> he was telling me he was like, um, "Yeah, you know, I I I uh, used to bench like five hundred back in the day, and like they'll tell you like how much they bench, and it's like yeah, this is how you got to do." I'm just like, "Okay." And he's like way out of shape. I'm just like, "Thank okay. you, thank you, thank you for your okay. feedback." Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> Let me tell you the biggest flex that I've seen at the gym. Okay, <laughs> boyfriend, girlfriend. Running next to each other at the gym. Oh, Girlfriend goes like this to his treadmill. <gasps> I said, Ooh! Mm-hmm. she needed him to go faster. I could She's not like, believe I'm it. Ne- I'm going to need you to. I've actually, you know what? Uh, when I was in prep, um, I was um, doing dumbbell rows. And then I got the, uh, I got like twice the weight I had. It was like 60. Um, and I gave it to my boyfriend. I'm like, <laughs> This on you. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm like make sure to remind my husband on a regular basis when he tells me how much he lifts. I go well. Actually, if you calculate via percent body weight, I'm still stronger than you. So you got to step it up. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too like, funny. So you can sit sit down. I'm bit. I'm like the opposite of most women. I'll be in the gym trying to outlift like the weakest guy I that I can try find. To, every single time, yeah. it's like I could see you in the corner trying to get more weight, <laughs> but I'm going to get heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I can it's, see you over it's there. motivating, Trying. but I, I wish more, more women like felt confident to explore other areas of fitness so for empowering. themselves, and to know that like you're not going to just like get big or destroy your body by lifting weights. No. It's actually good for you. It's good for your your longevity. I know, you know, physically, totally. You we're don't want to be we're, hunched we're over. We're pressured enough, yeah. right? You can't eat too much. You can't eat too many carbs. Don't lift weights, and it's like yeah. the gym so that I go rules. to. I feel like the men the male trainers there and it's pretty 50 50 men and female trainers um they're very supportive of 
of the women and yeah. in, in a motivating way. Like when I was doing the, using the bar, they'd be like, you know what? I think you could probably add a little bit of weight on there. Do you want to try that? And I can like assist you. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Like when you have that support, mm-hmm. it makes, I don't, I'm always nervous about my form just because I don't really know what I'm doing. So right. when I have someone in a class who's like really guiding me, a lot of people don't like that. I really like that. Like, I don't want someone to walk past me and be like, oh, that girl does not know what she's doing. Almost, Especially if I'm wearing my trifecta good. shirt. <laughs> yeah, almost almost every woman I've ever talked to, once you start lifting weights and improves your confidence, it makes you feel better. And it makes the dieting part and everything else easier. Right. Yeah. You, walk, you, have a, you have a training plan. You have an idea. You walk in the gym and you have that confidence of knowing what you're doing, where you're going, how many reps, how, many, how much weight you're going to do. And it just... Feels like, yeah, I don't need your help. I got it going on. Here. Totally. Yeah. The gym never felt like a safe space for me um, until I started making friends at the right. gym because I didn't feel like they were really including me. Right. So now I'm the one that includes people. And literally, they'll put people in the same class that I am and be like, oh, this is Camby. So that I can, you know, encourage them. Right. Because I, I liked that when I started meeting people. Right. You know, now I know if I don't go to the gym, there's going to be people who are like, where the heck were you? So that also motivates me, mm, absolutely. you know, to get up, get so, my little booty there. So what would you say to somebody that is really struggling with self-love? What advice would you give? You have to find your purpose more so. Like your why for going to the gym? Your why. Or for eating healthy? Yeah. Everybody has a reason to go. Everyone should always have a reason to go to the gym, you know, um, Fitness should always be something that someone has a part of their day, whether it's going to boxing, playing a sport, um, going to the gym regularly, just being active, um, and then getting to know people within that and then helping people within that. It just makes you feel that much better. Like, I achieved this, now I can branch off and help you. And when I help people, I feel so good about it because I'm like, now you're going to get going. You're going to be good. You're going to feel good. And you have someone actually like mentoring you or helping you and having someone else help you and just talk to you, even when it's a friend, just a vent. It helps you so much. Just get past that speed bump that you're going over. I think you know how much it has made your life better. Yes. And for (laughs) me, like working here, like starting to work here, um, that what like fitness wasn't a part of my life on the daily mm-hmm. and now i can i can never go back to not right. having it because right. the my coworkers have shared with me how much it has transformed their life right. and i feel the transformation in myself right you know i keep calling it can be 2.0 this is a new Bam. this is a new one so. you know when the <laughs> pandemic's over we got a butterfly emerging yes you know <laughs> different person that's right <laughs> but not on social media no, that's <laughs> not definitely not on social media oh and i just bought a real nice bikini i got to show it to you and I was proud. I was proud of my body in that bikini too. <laughs> and it's nice to be able to try it Sometimes on at home. Kind of play dress up in the mirror. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Get your hair done, makeup done, just like right, and then stunt on nobody. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> they can stunt on me. That's, that's the thing about progress photos too. Like if you're if you are working on yourself and you're taking photos on a regular basis. It's really fun to go back, and you don't have to share them with anybody. No. But even if you like absolutely hate the way that you look, which a lot of people do, and I know it's really uncomfortable to get basically naked in front of the mirror and take a photo of yourself, but challenge yourself, do it, and then work on yourself and take photos as you right. go through. And even if the scale doesn't budge or you feel like you've had no change and you go back and look, it's amazing how much right. even just like a couple weeks of a difference can make. And then it just becomes like addicting. You want to see like what else you're capable of. Right. And you just keep going because you feel that you feel that change and that gives just gives you more motivation for it. Just keep going. For sure. I just feel like fitness having a routine and going to the gym regularly can change like all assets of your routine. Yes. Can change like so many things in your life. Yeah. You know, for the positive. Right. Right. Because if I'm going to the gym every morning at 630 in the morning, well, I sure as heck am not drunk at midnight because my little booty needs to be sleeping, (laughs) you know? So it does like change my habits, I guess. Right. Um, Okay. So we have two questions that we always end the podcast with. (laughs) Okay. So the first one is, what is your personal motto? Um, I'm not going to say never give up because that's an average response. <laughs> it's a good one. Though. Yeah, it, it is, is good. Um, Emmy's is very good. 
be a badass with a good ass. Damn. <laughs> it's got to keep going. I think you might need to steal that because you do have a great ass. You can have it. <laughs> I have it, we can yeah. share it not yeah. that you don't have a great ass though no i'm keeping it too oh yeah you mean that's your motto <laughs> damn but yeah something like that i would say just keep going yeah you know um stopping your tracks is just gonna make give you give you a huge downfall um but with every downfall i just kept going because nobody's gonna help you but yourself <laughs> i think never give up is a good one yeah, yeah. just because it doesn't sound like you know, never give up. Yeah, don't never give up. Give up. Don't be I mean, how many, times, <laughs> how, many, don't give up. how many times have you told yourself that? Like, like stop. Like, probably don't. a million times. Right? Exactly. Yes. On and the stairmaster in the morning. Also, don't be a punk is for all of you rude people on social media. Yeah. Don't be <laughs> just mean. saying. Don't be mean. Okay. So the other the other question, if you don't have one, we recommend you just say the first thing that comes to mind, and then we'll look it up Ooh. and we'll we'll tell you what it means. Okay. Um, but we always we always talk about spirit animals here. This is one of our interview questions for all new team members to a trifecta. <laughs> but we would love to know what your spirit animal is. Wow, <laughs> she's like you guys are all over the map. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, spirit animal. Ooh, don't know my dog. My dog specifically. <laughs> She's clingy. I'm clingy. Um, <laughs> what she kind always of dog needs is love. She? I always need love. Pitbull. She's Aww. a Pitbull Terrier mix. She's so sweet. Yeah. You should look up what Pitbull means. Because wasn't a... They're nanny dogs. Bri- Brian was a Frenchie. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me look it up. Cambies is a penguin. And mine's a toucan. A toucan? Mm-hmm. Those. Yeah, aren't they cool? They're... They are cute. I got to go to Costa Rica and look at some toucans. Is, it tra- is there a travel ban still or oh. no? Is it open? Why? You are not outwardly aggressive, but defensive by nature. You will fight to the death to defend your friends and family Damn. with relentless vigor. <laughs> Let's see what else. Oh, that you do good trusting your intuition and you investigate your feelings when you suspect something is wrong. That's a powerful spirit. Animal. Yeah, it is. Very. It's like a... Also, I'm so weak that when I looked this up, the picture for the pit bull is like a rat terrier. <laughs> it's like that is not a pit bull. <laughs> so that's not the one I clicked on to see. The SEO game is strong. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> they were trying to get me. Oh my god. So my dog is a little um, Yorkie, Aww. and they're so cute. She would go for your dog like. They are. They have. They have big Coffee. hearts. They're yeah. bold. They're bold. My, well, she thinks my dog she's loves a pit bull. Dog. She just crouches down. Oh, yeah. yeah. But mine. Is, my dog is a pit bull in her heart, and she wants everyone to know it. Your keys are. <laughs> they are bold. Yeah, are. <laughs> I know. People will like the bigger dogs. They'll kind of pull them back on the leash, and I was like, "Oh no, you should be scared of my like, dog. Like, she has my no dogs can go crazy. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, Polly Pocket. Yeah, a little Polly Pocket. Yeah. What's your dog's name? Summer. Summer. She's so sweet. I love it. Okay, well, uh, Mm self-love. We got to be giving it to each other and to ourselves. Women need to empower other women. For sure. Yeah, get strong mentally and physically. Don't be weak. Yeah, I like it. Don't be weak. Be strong. I'm going to do more weight at the gym. Never give up. Flex on them. (laughs) Damn. There you go. Damn. Oh, that's a great way to end the podcast. I love it. Yeah. Flex (laughs) on. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> <Just> <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs>